kidding hi everyone and welcome back to my channel thank you for joining me today as we look at our next topic today's topic is all about knife cuts by the end of this video you're gonna be a master with your knife with different cuts like small dice large dice brunoise anyone chiffonade sound familiar so in this video today, we're gonna talk about the different types of cuts that are taught in culinary school, why they matter, what you can use them in, and how to do them. So get your knife, the sharpest one you have. <laughs> Let's get started. All right, since we're gonna be chopping a lot of surprise carrots today, I'm gonna sharpen my knife. And yes, I always keep her sharp. As you guys know in my previous video, I'm just going to pass my blade about three, or in this case, five times to get ready for what's gonna happen soon. And another thing to make our lives easier for this endeavor is stabilizing your cutting board. Simply wet or dampen a dish towel or a paper towel and put it on the base of where you're gonna put your cutting board to help it stop from moving as you're chopping and cutting. That simple. And here is the star of the show today, carrots. Practicing with carrots is such a good way to practice your knife cuts and your techniques and your different skills that you're working on because they're cheap, they're round, they really force you to stabilize, understanding how to cut, to prevent injury, and they're overall tasty. So if you do mess up, you can just snack on them, no big deal. Or bonus tip, if you have kids, just feed it to them. I also peel my vegetables over the sink because I don't want any of my food scraps or my food trash to go to a landfill. And here's why. According to thinkeatsave.org, most uneaten food or any of that food trash you just throw away ends up in landfills where it accounts for about 25% of the US methane emissions, which is a powerful greenhouse gas. And that's super harmful for the environment, more than CO2. And so it just rots there. And I just think to myself, man, this could be repurposed into a stock or even food for my compost. I know it's an extra step, but Mother Earth is going to thank you. For this video, I'm gonna be predominantly using the pinch grip. If you don't know what I'm talking about, please refer to my last video. And we're gonna quickly go over strokes. This is the chopping stroke. With the claw, you go up and down, up and down with your blade. This is chopping. And this is slicing. You do a saw-like motion back and forth, back and forth with the claw. Chopping up and down, up and down, slicing, rocking back and forth, rocking back and forth. Now that you're dying to start cutting, let's get started. These are the basic knife cuts that we're going to be learning about today. There are quite a lot, but this is a very good start. Also, I've included a ruler that's gonna be on the left side of your screen if you wanna follow along and measure with me. And we're also gonna be learning about a term called topping and tailing. This simply means just to trim both of the ends off of something for more uniformity. Here's the top and here is the tail. Remember, don't throw these scraps away. You can always reuse them. So after you top and tail your item, now we're going to learn about squaring off. The idea is to get the item to a stage that allows the knife cuts to be done uniformly. So step one, cut your carrot into manageable pieces, ideally about two inches long. Do you see how that carrot is just rolling all over the place? Yeah, that's how injury happens. So we have to square it off. Quite literally, make a square. So how you do that is you're going to slice down one side of the carrot as kind of finely as you can. And once again, we're making some food scraps, but don't worry, we're either gonna snack on them or reuse them. And you're gonna turn it on its side that you've already sliced, and you're gonna slice off another side until all four sides make a square. So right now, we are stabilizing the carrot as much as possible, from that round roly-poly to something very, very stable, and also uniform. This right here is step one for creating those Pinterest, Instagram worthy photos that you desire or that you wanna show off your friends. It's the squaring off method. So try this and we're gonna move on to cuts. Starting out with the badane cut. Say it with me, badane. Very good. 
The size of this is determined by a fourth of an inch by a fourth of an inch with it being two inches in length. And this is the entry to small dice because that's also the same dimensions. So the order of process goes top and tail, square off your item, baton A, and then into small dice. So you go from stick to cubes to dice. So now that I got my fourth of an inch sticks ready, I'm gonna try my best to cut them into fourth inch cubes. If using small dice to cook with, i.e. soups or stews, you wanna have the cook time to be 30 minutes or less. Next is the baton. It's not actually pronounced that way, but that's how I pronounce it. So anyways, this is a larger form of the badinet. Um, it's just a little bit thicker. And this is the entry to medium dice. So you do the same thing like you did with the small dice. You go from the sticks to dicing up your item. And the dimensions for medium dice are half inch all around. This cut is perfect for longer cooking time items. Between one and three hours long. I'm measuring this carrot because it looked like it was large dice and I was correct. Cause you know, I bought small carrots. I should have gotten bigger ones, but anyways. So the large dice is three fourths of an inch around. This cut is perfect for dishes that require a longer cooking time, like three or more hours. Think crock pot or like beef bourguignon. Oh, that sounds so good right now. And the smallest of the stick cuts is the julienne cut. To cut vegetables into julienne strips, you can use your knife to slice into the food about two inches long and that's about a one fourth inch thick. Then you're gonna stack your slices and cut them lengthwise again into another fourth of an inch thick strips and that is simply matchstick cuts. So this is the culinary school method which is marked by squaring off your item first. That's key here. But the other two methods I'm going to show you do not require squaring off at all which is cutting it at an angle. These are oblique cuts and you want to thinly slice them just like you thinly sliced the one previously. So I'm going to slice multiple ones because I'm going to show you the second technique that a home cook can use, which is very simple. This method does not require you squaring off your item. So you take your sliced oblique cut and then you stack them up just like you would with the culinary way. And then you just make the thin matchstick cuts again using your grips and using your claw. I really like this method, but you can kind of get sloppy like you see here. The second technique is overlaying your strips of carrot or vegetable and then holding them intact, anchoring with your thumb and just cutting down lengthwise however long your overlapping vegetables are. The thing to remember here is you want them in a sixteenth of an inch thick. This cut is really nice in raw applications like a salad or slaw or even candied lemon pills. And then the teeniest of the tiniest little dice is called the brunoise. Everyone say it with me, brunoise. Very good. This cut is made from julienne strips. So you'll take a bunch of julienne matchsticks that you've made that are all equal, not like mine. <laughs> and then you bunch them up and you cut them down into the small 16 of an inch squares. Great for garnishing any type of dish, really. This is the chiffonade technique. Everyone say it with me, chiffonade. Very good. This knife cut is especially important for very tender leafy greens or herbs that you don't wanna bruise. And we're gonna be using the slicing technique with this to not crush the cells of what we're chopping. We wanna keep everything intact, nice and fresh. We don't want any of the scent or the aroma to be on the cutting board after we're done cutting. So you simply roll up your leafy greens with the largest leaf on the bottom to the smallest leaf on top. And then you do your slicing motion very light handedly with your pinch grip or your pointer grip. You just wanna quickly slice without bruising or tearing at the item that you're slicing. You'll know when you go too far when your herbs are starting to bruise and or your cutting board is green. And that's it, that is your chiffonade cut. 
This one's a really fun cut, also known as the roll cut oblique cut. This is good for stews and soups. It's a very large cut, but it, it adds a little je ne sais quoi to your item, your, your finished dish. So it's literally called the roll cut because you roll your item, as you can see. As you're rolling, you're cutting it on the angle, and then you roll again, and you just cut to make the two angle sides. That's it. As you can see, my pieces are getting smaller and smaller, and I wouldn't use the small pieces with the large pieces because of different cooking times. So just keep that in mind if your carrot or your vegetable is getting smaller. All right, I'm just topping and telling my item right now because we are gonna move on to a simpler version that everyone knows, and that is the coin cut. You probably do this a lot chop up some vegetables, fruits like this for your children or your family. It's a it's a go-to cut, it's very familiar. I added it in here because of the name, the rondelle, and that's the culinary name for it. Next we have the half moon, pretty simple. You just divide whatever you're chopping in half, if it's round of course, and then you just keep it half moon. This is a quick and easy way just to get some chopping and a little bit of flair and nothing crazy. I hope you guys enjoyed this little tutorial. I know a lot of it might seem sciency with all the dimensions and maybe you feel like, oh, I have to do this every time. I have to meet these dimensions every time. And you really don't. Like if you can see really closely, I don't have all of my matchsticks perfectly in the same size. I don't have all of my small dies perfectly in a cube and that's okay. I am still learning just as you are. And that's the important thing is that you're trying and that you're setting yourself up for that knowledge for the future. And if you don't get it right the first time, don't beat yourself up. You have plenty of time to just keep on practicing. I mean, look, I just forgot my half moon babies. Sorry guys. So practice these cuts and let me know what you think in the comments below. Thank you so much for watching my video. I hope you got value out of it. If you did, can you please press the like button and also subscribe? I'll see you in my next video where we talk about mirepoix. Stay tuned to find out what that means. I hope you guys have a great week and I'll see you in my next video. Bye.